Could you please comment on any observations uh, that either of you may have concerning executive compensation and optional issuance? And my second question to you, Mr. Buffett, um, could you just give us a, some idea of what a normal day, how you would like to spend a reasonable normal day and working on the investment side of the equation or analysis or reading? I just, I, I read a lot. Um, and I talk on the telephone a fair amount. We have no meetings. Uh, we have no committees. We have no slide presentations. You know, we have, we have nothing. I mean, it, um, didn't, and uh, so, we, so I, I read a lot. I read annual reports. I read business publications. I could do it in way less time, but I enjoy doing it, so I make it last. I mean, you know, like some other activities in life. The, uh, so it's, it's there's, there's really, it, it's the most boring job to anybody watching it, but I'm in love with it, you know, and so I, I, I like doing that, and um, I don't like talking about it a lot. Um, I just, I just like to kind of keep up with what's going on. Like I say, by this point in life, I could filter out so much of that, it would, uh, I just don't need to do that much of it, but I, but I, I kind of enjoy just seeing what's going on uh, vicariously through doing a lot of reading, and I spend some time on the phone, and I, I'm on the computer a lot playing bridge, and, and I get to do what I like all the time. At, uh, uh, we'll let Charlie describe what he does, which is even more bizarre. Uh, <laughs> And then we'll talk about compensation and options. <laughs> well, there's a little more foolishness in my life than Warren's, and uh, including being chairman of a large hospital. I, I'm not suggesting that hospitals are foolish. I'm just suggesting that it takes a certain quirk of mind to be willing to be the chairman of a hospital. And uh, so my life is even more, it's less rational than Warren's. Warren lives one of the most rational lives I've ever seen, and uh, it's it's almost unbelievable. And and uh, he's got me wondering why I'm here today. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about comp then yeah, a little. Comp, yeah. yeah, the uh, comps. There there are three or four aspects to that. And, uh, uh, on the subject of options, I would say that that most options are constructed poorly from the standpoint of the owner, but they're constructed very well from the standpoint of the person who receives them, which is not uh, entirely uh, uh, unexplainable because the, the, uh, it's, it's a very strange form of, of negotiation when the, uh, the, net, the beneficiary is the one that also really does all the design and hires the experts to come in and tell them what is good for the company when the expert knows that the guy who signs the check would be quite interested also in hearing what's good for him. Uh, there's nothing wrong with options per se at all. Uh, frankly, uh, in terms of Berkshire, it would have been perfectly appropriate if a properly designed option had been given to me or to Charlie. I mean, we have responsibility for the whole enterprise, and we believe that any kind of perform incentive for, uh, for uh, performance should be related to the area in which you have responsibility. We feel that uh, if you want a typist to type 100 words a minute, that you ought to pay for typing 100 words a minute, not what the earnings per share were last year. We feel if a salesman should, gets paid for how many how many uh, of the product is sold, he should get paid for that and not uh, for some production uh, quote is met. Uh, so we believe in tying incentive comp to to performance uh, for which you have responsibility, and there's certain areas of a business that don't lend themselves to that staff performance and so on. But that would lead to the corollary that the people that are responsible for the entire results of the business, it's perfectly appropriate to compensate them by options that in, in some way uh, reflect the performance of that entire business. Now, the trouble is that stock prices reflect other things than the performance of the business. Uh, for one thing, over a period of time, they reflect simply the reinvestment of earnings. You know, I have pointed out in the past that if you gave me an option on your savings account to manage your savings account and you reinvested all the interest, uh, I would take away a significant payment at the end of 10 years simply because you left the interest. And with a company that pays no dividend like Berkshire, 
uh, if you're going to leave all your capital in every year, for me to get a fixed price option for 10 years would mean that I was getting a royalty on your, the money that you left with me, and I made the choice to have you leave it with me. So that does not strike me as equitable. So I think any option should have a, a, a step up in price that reflects the fact that money is reinvested by the shareholders annually. That uh, uh, if somebody wants to pay out 100 percent of the earnings every year, then I say that you can have a fixed priced option. If you give me the money every year and, and you do more with the money that's left with you in the original sum, that's fine. But if, 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 if money is left uh, with someone uh, for 10 years, if, there's going to be some increase in value even if they spend every day uh, golfing. And, and to give a piece of that away simply over to have a royalty on the passage of time uh, for them is, is, a, is a mistake. Uh, I think options ought to be granted basically at the fair value of the business at the time they're granted. Sometimes that's the market price, sometimes it isn't the market price. But uh, certainly the management of a company would not give an option on their business to some third party at a market price they felt was way too low. So I find it a little, uh, a little disingenuous when management say that they're, when they get a takeover bid, they say that the st company's really worth twice that much, but they're perfectly willing to issue options to themselves uh, at this price, which they say is totally inadequate uh, uh, when the owners get the option elsewhere. But options properly structured for people with responsibility for the business, I think, makes, can make sense. And I think that if something happened to, to, uh, to me and to Charlie, that uh, uh, in terms of the manager of the business subsequently, if it was structured properly, I would not say anything wrong with an, with an, with an op option arrangement. Uh, we carry this philosophy down to our subsidiaries where they generally have incentive arrangements that relate to the operation of their business, but they don't have incentive arrangements that relate to Berkshire overall because uh, if Chuck Huggins does a wonderful job at Seas Candy, as he has done, and I fall on my face in terms of allocating capital, Berkshire stock will go no place despite uh, what Chuck does. And to penalize him or to tie his rewards to something over which he has no control, I think, is kind of silly. So we tie it instead to the operations of the candy business. In terms of overall level of compensation, uh, the, the, real, the real sin is having a mediocre manager. I mean, they, they, that, that is what costs owners uh, very significant amounts of money over time. And if a mediocre manager is, is paid a relatively small sum, it's still a great mistake. And if they're paid huge sums, it's a travesty, and that, that happens sometimes. It's almost impossible to pay the outstanding manager uh, a sum that's disproportionate to the value of that outstanding manager when you get a large enterprise. Coca-Cola had a market value of $4 billion when Roberto Goizueta took over. It had stagnated during the previous decade uh, under uh, an earlier management, despite having the same product and those great Mean Joe Green commercials. You saw that was Mean Joe Green was in the 70s. The uh, Teach the World to Sing commercial was in the 70s. All these great commercials, but the company didn't do much. Uh, Roberto, if, if we'd bought the entire Coca-Cola company, I wish we had. In 1981 or two, whenever he came in at, for four billion, and we now had a business worth 150 billion, Roberta would have earned more money with us than he's earned under the present arrangement. I mean, the, having the right person in place is just enormously important. How much they should take is another question. That's more a philosophical question. Tom Murphy, best manager you know in the world, he just didn't feel like taking a lot of money out of it, you know, and and and. You know, I tip my hat to him, but I don't think that necessarily makes it wrong for somebody else to take, take more money for, for doing the job. But I think it ought to be related to doing the job. When I ran a partnership in the 1960s, I took a quarter of the profit over 6% a year. And, and uh, I didn't get paid any salary, but, but I could make a lot of money doing that. And that thought occurred to me as I ran the place from day to day, and I think it probably helped a little. <laughs> so I don't think it's a terrible thing to have have somebody get paid for making money uh, for the shareholders, but they ought to get paid for really making it, not simply because the shareholders reinvest money with them. They ought to make it based on the fair value of what they, they, they had when they took over, and, and uh, uh, they ought to make it really for just excellent performance. Charlie? Well, we have remarked in 
previous Berkshire Hathaway meetings that we regard present mandated uh, corporate accounting with respect to stock options as weak, corrupt, and contemptible. And it is. Otherwise, uh, we're undecided. Yeah. <laughs> if something is so wonderful as a standard technique of compensation, why does it have to be masked under weak, corrupt, and contemptible accounting? Uh, I think it is no credit to our civilization that we've drifted into this particular modality. And you can get, if you overuse stock options, where the whole thing is sort of a chain letter. I mean, in Silicon Valley, there's one company that practically paid everybody in options. And as long as the chain letter galloped, it, uh, it worked as far as the income account because nothing went through expense. Uh, and then, once everybody is issuing stock options, everybody else feels uh, that he has to do it. And, uh, and, the, and the practice spreads. So I am not totally wild about uh, the extreme prevalence of, of the stock option uh, modality in, a, in an American corporate life. Personally, I would vastly prefer different modalities, which would probably involve stock instead of stock options. I'm all for sharing with the kind of people who are doing the important work pretty well down in the organization at a place like Costco or Coca-Cola or any other such company, but I don't much like the, the present scheme that civilization has drifted into. With respect to the subject of do we have some wretched excesses in American corporate compensation, my answer would be yes. Uh, I don't think the excess is necessarily the guy who got the most money. In many cases, I, I agree with Warren, the money has been deserved. But such is the envy effect that, that the practice spreads to everybody else, and then the taxi driver and everybody starts thinking the system is irrational, unfair, crazy. And, uh, and I think that's what causes some people, as they rise in American corporations to, at a certain point of, of uh, power gaining and wealth gaining, they start exercising extreme restraint as a sort of moral duty. And uh, that's what Warren was saying about Tom Murphy. And I would argue that the Tom Murphy attitude is the right attitude. And it goes way, way back in the history of civilization. Uh, the word liturgy comes from a Greek word, of the, which is just the same. I mean, if you were an important citizen of Athens, uh, it was a lot like being uh, an important person in, an, uh, in, in Jewish culture. I mean, you had duties to give back and to act as a certain example. And the civilization had social pressures that, that enforced those duties. And I would argue that uh, the Berkshire Hathaway compensation system, considering what the people at the top already have, uh, it, it would be better if we saw a little more of it. Two, two, I, I think Warren and I do all right. <laughs> two, two years ago, I, I think a, an added problem is, 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 the, is the sort of, in terms of the accounting, the sort of hypocrisy that it pushes people into and then which becomes accepted and, and, and sort of a norm, particularly when leaders do it. And, you know, you had a situation a few years back when uh, there's no question that any manager would say that stock options are a form of compensation. They would say that compensation is a form of expense, and they would say that expense belongs in the, in the uh, income account. But they didn't want to have stock options counted because they felt that it might it might restrict their use. So when the federal, uh, the FASB, Financial Accounting Standards Board, came up with a proposal to actually have uh, reality reflected uh, en masse, corporate chieftains descended on Washington to pressure legislators uh, to have Congress start enacting accounting standards, which 
As I mentioned one time, in Indiana in the 1890s, there was a legislator that introduced a bill to have the value of pi changed to an even three because he thought 3.14159 was too tough for the school children and it would ease computational problems. Well, that, that sort of behavior by corporate chieftains when they are in there, you know, arguing that the black is white in order to feather their own nests and maybe create little higher stock prices. I think that it means that they forfeit to some degree their right to be taken seriously when they claim they're operating for the good of the republic and march on Washington in other regards. And, and I, I, I just think that when the organization recognizes its hypocrisy and so on, I, I, I think there's a degradation that, that uh, the consent is set in through, a, through an organization that, uh, whose leaders are, uh, are also uh, leaders in hypocrisy. And, uh, like I say, we have no strong feelings on this subject. But Char <laughs> Charlie, do you have anyone? It's rather interesting, though. The, there's, a, there's an earlier example. Commodore Vanderbilt took no salary from his railroads. After all, he controlled the railroads. They paid all the dividends that he needed, and uh, he got the fun of running the whole railroad, and he thought it was beneath Commodore Vanderbilt to uh, take a salary. We've never quite reached the Vanderbilt standard, but... <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any dividends, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe that's the yeah. reason. I used to have a friend that was a stock salesman many years ago, and when you'd have lunch with him, he would just keep going like this. And finally, it would get to you and you'd say, what's that? And he'd say, that's opportunity. 